You're the greatest. No, you're the greatest. Who's the greatest? Right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 Thank you. 
Is everyone ready? Okay. Good morning. I am attorney Ben Crump, and along with my co-counsels, attorney Paul Grinky and attorney Chris O'Neill, attorney Precious Chavez, and attorney Stephanie Cantor, Amita, we have the honor and the privilege of representing and fighting for justice for the family of Eric Cantor Jr. We have present with us his father, Eric Cantor Sr., and his mother, Victoria Casares. Now, this press conference is to give an update on the medical condition of Eric Cantu. As we know, that it's been three weeks and he is continuing to fight for his life on life support. His mother and father are going to speak from the heart and tell you about that struggle and ask for your continued prayers. This is about vigilance. This is about everyday praying first and foremost for Eric's life. This is what this is about. There is no other priority other than Eric's life being preserved. We don't take any day for granted. We know from his parents that he was shot at least four times. His mother is going to tell you about how these bullets mutilated her only son's body. His father is going to tell you about the struggles every day just to make it through the day. How many wires and tubes was hooked up to his body. How the cocktail of narcotics, including fentanyl, was there to just try to keep him stable. You're going to hear about the bullets hitting his vital organs from his mother, how he still has a hole in his chest right below his heart. You're going to hear about this is about miracles. The fact that Eric is here is about a miracle every day. And then the second aspect of this press conference is about justice. It's about justice. 
you cannot justify this unjustifiable, unconstitutional, excessive use of force on this young 17-year-old child who was doing everything right. I mean, he graduated from high school early. He had ambitions to be a businessman. He wanted to follow in his parents' footsteps, people who were constructive citizens to society, were business people who believed in trying to make it better for the next generation. Already at 17 years old, that was his thinking about trying to perpetuate their family's legacy here in America. One of the things I talked to my law partner, Chris O'Neill, who was a police officer for 10 years before he became a lawyer, and when you think about justice, you look at that video. And as parents, you ask, is this really protecting and serving? I mean, this officer not only violated the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution against unlawful searches and seizures, but he violated apparently every policy of the San Antonio Police Department, but more importantly, he violated every policy of common sense and decency. I mean, he didn't give verbal commands. He didn't use the least intrusive measure to interact and confront a citizen. I mean, he used the most in face, I mean, the most confrontational. I mean, he went and opened the door, putting not only his life in danger, but the occupants of life in danger. Who teaches you to do that? To go open a door of somebody who obviously you suspect is a problem. And why? Why, you ask? Because he profiled this young Hispanic teenager. Yes. Yes. He profiled him, Lulac. Yes, There's no question about it. You will hear from my co-counsel, Attorney Greenkey, what the district attorney told the parents about what the officer said from his own words. It was a Hispanic kid with a bowl-shaped haircut. That's it. That's why we're here. That's why he shot 10 times. 10 times. He shot five times. And then he said, shots fired, shots fired. And then he shot five more times. My God. What was he expecting to do to Victoria and Eric's son shooting 10 times into a car? I mean, with him feet away from him. What did he think was going to happen? Was he trying to kill Eric? That's why we're asking for justice for Eric Cantu. Because if we don't get justice for Eric Cantu, then it can happen to you. And we got to continue to all say justice for Eric Cantu. Justice for Eric Cantu. Justice for Eric Cantu. Justice for Eric can too. Justice for Eric can too. If we don't get justice for Eric can too, honest to God, it can happen to you. We have to get justice in this matter. There's no justifying this. No justifying this unjustifiable actions. Cannot justify it. You're going to also, the last part of this press conference is what Eric's family has asked for just as fervently as they've asked for your prayers and they asked for justice.
they're asking for change. So no other parent, whether black, white, brown, native, Asian, will have to endure what they are enduring. This is torture for them. Every day, praying that my son just makes it through another day. That the individual who was supposed to protect and serve him profile and shot him in his chest, in his stomach, and all his vital organs. This is about change. We are praying for his life, justice, and change. Did I get that right, Victoria? Yes. Eric? Yes, sir. It is about prayers first for his life. Yes. And then secondly, for justice. And then finally, we're asking for change. So this won't happen not only in San Antonio, it won't happen in Texas, but it won't happen anywhere in the United States of America. And we will remember that this will be the legacy of Eric Cantu, that he survives this mutilation that he has decent quality of life that he can pursue his dreams yes. Yes. and that his legacy would be that this won't happen to your child your teenager that they are profiled at a McDonald's parking lot eating a cheeseburger and who can forget how started this kid was. I mean, you see his eyes. I mean, his mother and father can tell you better than any of us attorneys can, but you saw it with your own eyes. You don't have to take it from any of us. Watch that video and you see everything that we need to change about policing in America. So not only can our children get home safe to us, but so police officers can get home safe to their family. It's going to require change, Al, and we got to focus on that change. We can't be afraid of changing for the better because that is what Eric's mother and father want. They want change for the better in Eric's name. That's all we're asking for, prayers for his life, prayers for justice, and press for change. At this time, you're going to hear from my great co-counsel who's based here in Texas. His firm is one of the most prestigious firms in the state of Texas. And he has been, along with our legal team, night and day, round the clock, uh, working with the family to keep them grounded to keep them grounded in prayer. Not forget all this legal stuff, this legal lease. This is about praying for a young man's life. Yes. yes. And he's going to talk about some of the technical matters and then I'm going to introduce you for the first time to hear from the parents of Eric Cantu Jr., yes. his mother and father. So this great lawyer who I have the honor of working with on many cases, Attorney Paul Grinke. Good morning, everyone. First, Eric and Victoria have asked me to thank someone who has been by their side uh, from the very beginning of this nightmare. Uh, it's an attorney uh, here in San Antonio by the name of Brian Powers. Yes. And uh, they have told me from the first time that we met that Brian has been there for them and removed obstacles that were put in front of them when they were just trying to get to see their son uh, and who has held their hand along the way. So thank you, Brian. Yes. The family also would like to thank District Attorney Joe Gonzalez. Yes. We'd like to thank him for having the courage to press charges and do it immediately. I know that the family would like to see more, but the family did have an opportunity to meet uh, with the district attorney and his team and they spent an afternoon uh, with Eric and Victoria and showed them what they're seeing 
and we appreciate that. It's something that we don't see enough in these types of cases, unfortunately. Also want to thank Chief McManus for having the courage to come out quickly and directly and saying that this officer's actions were wrong. They were callous and they broke many, many department policies. I thank Chief McManus for that. And I will tell you that we have had police experts from around the country and right here in Texas rally uh, to this cause for this family and tell us that they agree with the chief that so many policies were violated in this instance. Unfortunately, I'll tell you that we've learned over the years that these incidents don't start at the moment the trigger is pulled. That's right. That's right. It's not when they start. They start back in the hiring process, in the training process, in the retention process, and in the policies and procedures of each police department. Over the next several months, we will shine a light on the San Antonio Police Department, and I hope that the chief will welcome that light. I challenge the department to open the doors, open the windows, welcome the light, and let us find ways, like Ben said, for change. Let us take a good hard look at the policies and the training and the retention that got us here on these courthouse steps today. The last thing I want to tell you is that as I have spent time with this beautiful family uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, I'm a father, and I know many of you are parents, mothers and fathers. Young Eric is inside of a nightmare that he cannot wake up from. Eric and Victoria are right at his bedside living inside of a nightmare that they cannot wake up from. This is what you're about to hear from Eric and Victoria. But I do have faith. We are praying every day ceaselessly for young Eric yes. and for Eric and Victoria. Yes. We believe he will survive. Yes. I can tell he is a fighter yes. and we are here to fight with him. Yes. Thank you, Beth. Thank you so much, Attorney Grinke. Um, now you're gonna hear from his father, Eric Cantua Sr. I'm just can't tell, I'm sorry. It's just a heavy heart after talking to Eric. Uh, this is very difficult for three weeks. They have not spoke publicly. And the reason they did not speak publicly because they were just focused on their son. They knew everybody was talking about this case across America. The kid who was shot in the McDonald's parking lot eating a cheeseburger. But they understood that we were going to get to this day. The most important thing right now was him making it through a day. They wake up every morning with the same prayer. Let my son make it through the day. And I'm not overstating that. You're about to hear from Eric Sr. talk about what they encountered day one and how real the struggle is to this day about we don't want him to go into cardiac arrest. Any day could prove fatal. And so they're not taking any day for granted. They are praying every day. And that's why they're there 24 hours around the clock. As Paul said, they literally have been living at the hospital in the ICU ward. And so Eric is going to speak to you from the heart. Um, obviously, they are part of a fraternity now that no parent wants to become a part of where your child is shot by the police. That's not what they ever expected in life. And so they're gonna do the best they can, understand they're overrun with emotions. And even talking about it may get a 
bit emotional for them, so please just bear with them. We, we've come a long way to this day. So please give your prayers and support to Eric Cantu. Good morning, everybody. As um, the attorneys have uh, acknowledged, I am Eric Cantu. I'm Eric's father, and um, this is the family behind me, my brothers, uh, aunts, daughters, Desiree and Alicia. Um, you know, so Eric is a, a vital organ of our, our life and our family. And without him, you know, a piece of us dies. So to give you an update on where he's at today, it's, it's a very touch and go. It's very hard. Um, you know, it's very hard to even get that phone call at 11 o'clock at night and to walk into that bedroom where he was at and see him cut from the center of his chest down to his stomach, stapled, tubes in his mouth, tubes in his sides. He's had multiple of those, four. And, uh, but there's an update to that. I don't know if it's the update we wanted to hear, but in order to get him to progress from the tube that was intubated into his throat to help him breathe, he uh, um, formed a, a case of pneumonia. And that pneumonia caused him to have more fluid. And that fluid caused him to have more tubes. So with that, you, you're fighting fever. You don't know where the fever's coming from. Is it the pain inside his body or is it the pain inside the pneumonia? But we went to the next step a few days ago and it's not a step we thought was a step, but according to the hospital staff it was and we allowed him to get a trach into his throat. It's, it's relieving to him to some degree but Eric's not our Eric because even though he's there, now he's waking up from these sedatives, a cocktail of different sedatives just to keep him alive and comfortable from fentanyl, uh, which counterattacks his breathing. So it's a, it's a rat race of the fentanyl stopping him from breathing and the machine keeping him going. So as we try, as the doctors try to wean him off these things in the last few days, it doesn't seem to counteract the way we anticipated. Therefore, those little steps we see daily, we just end up keep going back because now we're fighting a whole different thing of, well, we got to wean him off all these narcotics and his body's not reacting to those narcotics well. He's literally, you know, he shakes and convulses from not having them. So then we're back to square one, putting him back on again, moving the breathalyzers back up again to 100% so that he can breathe properly and we don't have to see these elevated heart rates of near 200 to where they're scared and people rush in because it's cardiac arrest time. These are the things we see daily. These are the things we've had to wake up to every three or four hours, every minute of him waking up, sleeping, what we think is a peaceful sleep, to hallucinations and raising his hands and trying to press the pedals to the car and pushing gun symbols these are the things we have to see daily that no one has seen, that no one gets to feel. And it's, it's hurtful in a lot of different ways, but we're making it through it. And also, I'm sorry, I'm going sideways against this update, but the, the little pieces that we do get, we cherish them. They're small updates. They're little ones, but they're big in the bigger picture. And he is getting slightly better. His wounds are healing. But the wounds that, that he's endured are, are great. They're, there's a lot of them. And, and his mother, Victoria, she handles those better on where they're at. I don't want to see them. I don't even want to know about them. I just want to hold his hand at times. So she knows better on where they're at. And, and, and I think she could give a better description of, of where they've been and, and, and maybe tell us a little better. Thank you, Eric. I'm Victoria Cossidus. I am Eric Cantu's mother. I'm his proud mother. He's such a fighter, he's so strong, and he's doing this. Imagine getting a phone call on a Sunday night when you're getting ready for bed, and you answer it, and you don't want it to think it's one of your kids. Don't recognize the number, so you answer it. It's a hospital. Hospital saying, I'm sorry, we need you to get here as soon as you can. Your son is asking for you. 
he's been shot. He's been shot by police. Originally because he, they thought he ran over a police officer was the first part of the story, which is untrue. But imagine getting that phone call. Imagine racing over to the hospital and not knowing what to expect. I think that was one of the most difficult times for, for me and for his father. Um, it's just been a horrific roller coaster. Um, we decided not to go public because, again, like uh, Mr. Crump stated or his father stated, we just we couldn't. We our main focus has just been Eric's health. It has been just horrific tragedy that's happened to our son, and we just want to be there by his side every day to make sure he can breathe make sure he's able to wake up and see tomorrow. The injuries that Eric has sustained, I a book of superhero. Um, there's been multiple, multiple shots. Um, we, don't, we don't even know how many. We suspect that there's been or assume there's been four because that's how many bullets have been uh, recovered with the exception of one that is still lodged uh, near his heart. They're unable to get that out right now. Um, it, it would do more harm than good. And that's uh, another uh, something that we'll have to deal with in the future. But right now, you know, it, it's there in place. He's been shot in his stomach. He was shot in his diaphragm, his lungs, uh, his liver and uh, one in his bicep and his forearm. So he's, he's, just, he's just mutilated and it hurts us to see our son that way. And I thought I would be able to speak about his injuries. I thought I could be strong and do this. I don't think I can. So I'm gonna give it back to Crump. Um, I apologize, I thought I was ready. Um, I just want everybody to continue to pray for Eric and just be there for his support. We need you, he needs you. Thank you, Victoria. Prayers for Eric. And prayers for Eric. Prayers for Eric. Prayers for Eric. Prayers for Eric. And please know, Victoria and Eric, y'all are not alone. I mean, not only do you have a strong family, but we're all your family today. And we're praying for Eric each and every day. Uh, I told you all that it was going to be very difficult, very emotional for these parents. Because you can't imagine, and they told Paul and I even more descriptions of how he's cut open from what you said Eric from here from his chest down to down below his belly button and this is what they are coping with every day and every time they try to wean them off of the medication the cocktail of narcotics he goes into cardiac arrest and so they get fear for that oh we may lose them so then they cut the breathing machine back up and it's like uh, uh, Eric said, a tug of war, trying to see if you can get them off the breathing machine by increasing the drugs. And then when you try to decrease the drugs, then you have to increase the breathing machine. This has been three weeks now. And so not only they're worried about every day trying to preserve his life, but what quality of life will he have once he gets through this? because they have the faith. This family has the faith that God is going to pull him through this. Yes. And I, 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 you all heard when we released the update this weekend where Victoria and Eric said it's like he, a miracle. He's like a miracle even to this point. But they said something I thought was even more profound this morning uh, about every week is a miracle. It's been three weeks of miracles, and now we're just praying for four weeks of miracles, and then five weeks of miracles. 
and then six weeks of miracles. And I just thought that was so profound how you all said that, Victoria, until hopefully he recovers completely and he can live out his dreams, so many dreams he had, that in a single instance in a McDonald's parking lot have been drastically compromised. But they're not giving up on their son, and they know Eric is a fighter, and Eric is not going to give up on his dreams. We're going to claim this victory in the name of the Lord, that he will survive. Amen. Prayers for Eric. Amen. Would any of the other family members like to say anything? Okay, his other family members are going to uh, greet you. Um, I'm Raul Anthony Alsate. Eric is my nephew. Um, I just want to say I think Chief McManus said it best when he said it was a horrific video and an unjustified shooting. There's no other way to put it. Amen. Nobody could have put it better than our chief, than our chief of police, Chief McManus. Um, continued prayers for Eric. We had a vigil for him last weekend. We brought him up in spirit. We brought him up in prayer. We know that through the power of prayer, everything is possible. Amen. He's going to make it through this because he's a fighter. He's always been a fighter. Um, continue. We're just asking for continued prayers for Eric. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Natalia y soy la tía de Eric. Les queremos dar las gracias por estar presente con nosotros en este día. Primariamente queremos que todos se queden unidos con nosotros en oración. Obviamente hay muchas otras cosas que tenemos que este, vivir después de eso, pero para nosotros, para los papás, para el, para el tío, para la abuelita, para, las, para toda la familia, lo más importante para nosotros ahorita es el salud de Eric. Obviamente le falta mucho para recuperar y la verdad es que no lo podemos hacer sin el Dios que es grande y todopoderoso y con la, las personas de la comunidad que nos están dando gracia, amor y muchas oraciones. Entonces, ahorita lo que los papás han este, explicado es que ha tenido muchas complicaciones médicas con sus respiraciones, con una infección de neumonía y desafortunadamente eso ha hecho una dificultad para que él siga progresando. So, primariamente pedimos que pongan en oración sus pulmones, su corazón y la infección. Gracias. Before we uh, let the official from LULAC uh, say a few remarks of support for the family, I want to ask Eric Cantu Sr. if he can talk about a little bit about what the district attorney talked with them about, about profiling his son, because as Victoria says, she was mortified to find out when they saw the video that her son didn't run over the police. The reason he was shot was because they profiled a Hispanic teenage boy who was their son. So, Eric, can you? Um, so that was a really hard scene. We were able to see the, the video pretty quick. I think this happened at 11 o'clock at night. By the next afternoon, uh, we were able to see the video, and it's one that brought me to my knees because what we saw was not Eric actually, which I know he would never do because he wasn't raised that way. Matter of fact, he wanted to be a police officer. We have multiple years of pictures of him in his Halloween costume being a police officer and running around that thing for yeah. days on end. So he would not run over a police officer, and that's what we saw that day. We saw it, the world saw it. The truth came out, and thankfully there was something to prove that, because if not, where would we be today? Yeah. My Lord. It would be a, their word against ours, right? Yeah. So we have that ability to, to fight this part of the justice. But the disturbing part was a lot of the actions of that offer, shots fired, you know, bring all the troops in. Let's get everybody here. We have a criminal. Well, my son was scared. That's a fact. I think everybody's seen that as well, right? Yes. So 
when he got down the road, we had more unjustly acts committed to Eric. But the start to all that was on why he was there was he was profiled. We were told the officer didn't get the greatest look at him, but that he said he was a Hispanic with a bold haircut. That's it. That what he based all of this on, that statement there. And then to fast forward to the incident, or the scene, he wasn't even there for that. But again, he thought he saw a Hispanic kid with a bold haircut in a car that he may have or may have not recognized as stolen, which was not stolen. It's our car. So this is the part that hurts, is that he was profiled and he was violently, you know, injured over it, is what we feel at some point. I don't know how else to put it, Mr. Crump. It, it, no. That is what it, what it is, and we're having to suffer daily on it. No, thank you, Eric. I think that's important that the people hear what the district attorney told you all about, how this officer, in his own words, that's what he said. It was a Hispanic kid with a bow haircut, a bow-shaped haircut. And so him violating all those constitutional rights was because he profiled the Hispanic kid with a bowl-shaped haircut, and he thought he had the right to just eviscerate the Constitution. I mean, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution says we have a right against unlawful searches and seizures. What crime was being committed by two 17-year-old kids parked in McDonald's parking lot eating a cheeseburger. How is that a crime? How do you even suspect that that's a criminal act where you're going to violate the Constitution and go open his door, not only putting your life in danger, but putting their lives in danger? And then to shoot not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times. Then you pause, right, Victoria? Pause, say shots fired, shots fired. And then you shoot five more times. And that's why the family and everybody says, nah, he needs to have the book thrown at him. He needs to have the most charges ever because you got to send the message to police that you can't do this to our children. It doesn't matter if they're brown or black or white. These are our children. And we love our children just like you love your children. And so it gets emotional. Victoria, I'm getting emotional. So, um, finally, before we take your questions, we're going to have Mr. Gaza, who is uh, a great community activist and leader. Uh, he does uh, activism for all communities, but especially for the Latina community here in Texas uh, in his capacity as a leader of LULAC. And he did not think it robbery to make sure that everybody knew that they were going to stand with this family from beginning to the end till we see his recovery and we see justice and most importantly we see change. Give it up for Isidore Gaza for LULAC. Viva Eric! Viva Eric! Before I throw my hand, my fist up in the air, because we are upset, I bend my knees to our Heavenly Father. Because most important is Eric's full recovery. And I embrace the petitions of Eric Sr. and Victoria. Mr. Tr Mr. Crump, I embrace the request from our Heavenly Father yes. for a full recovery, and that is the only thing that right now we care about. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gaza.
we ask of you, Heavenly Father, on blessings, all the blessings that you have, point them down to the university hospital yes. where there's a man fighting for his life right now. Yes, Lord. Give him life. Yes, He's Lord. worthy of it. Yes, Lord. And then we go to the next step and the next step. Mm -hmm. We're so blessed to be here in San Antonio with the heads that we have leading our, our city right now. I tip my hat off to the district attorney for the, the position that he has taken. I take my, my hat off to the chief of police, uh, 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 Chief McManus, uh, and I, I can only take you 600 miles away from here, the town of Midland, 665 days before we got even the basic police report. Here, in two days, the, the people that are heading, the district attorney and the uh, police chief, have done what every community needs in this country. If we had those kind of leaders all over, we wouldn't have the, the many problems that we do. Now, we still have a problem. Mm -hmm. We still have a problem. And we, those problems need to be corrected. And that's the third phase of what Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Crump has advocated for. And that is, what are we going to do with a system that's broken? Amen. It needs to change. Yes, if we're not ready for change, if we're not ready to bring it up before our friends, the Chief McManus, who's my friend, if I don't have the courage to go up and say, look, yeah, we, we have nothing against you, Chief, but your system was wrong, and somebody's got to be accountable for it, and you're at the very top. Yes. Yes. So I want to thank the many groups. Blue Luck is here, but Blue we also Luck. have Pharaoh. Uh, we also let's have a loud round of applause for Pharaoh. We have a, a, a Ananda. Uh, also leading, uh, we have many LULAC, LULACers, Ms. Lupe Torres, uh, who is a VP. We have many, many little Zapatista, uh, and Nick Peña, um, yeah. and, and, and the next state representative uh, from, from this community uh, who is with us today. So, so there's a grace. There's so many good people here that are behind one effort. And one effort is to pray for the betterment, for the health, the full recovery of, of Eric as he go, as he struggles, not on a weekly basis, on a second by second basis. And we pray for that recovery. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your blessings. No, thank you, brother. We have to get justice for Eric Cantu. Yes. We have to get justice for Eric Cantu. Because if we don't, next time it can happen to you. That is so real, brothers and sisters. We're all together and getting justice. With that, we're going to uh, try to take some of your questions. Well, at this time, we have not heard from the FBI, but as is our normal course, we will reach out to the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division to have them review this matter. Del profil. Muy bien. Este, la información que les dieron a los papás eh, del policía que dio su información a, no sé, a su capitán o a la persona que lo estaba entrevistando, era que el profil era de un, un niño hispano con un corte específico. Y eso es eh, para nosotros lo que nos alarma mucho, ¿verdad? Que fue un, un profil de él y que esa fue la única razón por cual ese policía, que no estaba ahí para él, estaba ahí para algo completamente diferente, seleccionó ir al carro, abrirle la puerta, que no tiene el derecho de hacer. Bueno. It really isn't about what I would like to see. It's what his family would like to see. If this was your family, what charges would you want? And then just apply that to Eric's family. They want the maximum. I mean, as we talked, it looked like he was trying to murder him. I mean, 
those many shots. And so they're grateful that the district attorney did bring charges, but they, like any parent, would want the most charges to say that you did this to my child. I mean, this is Victoria's only son. This is Eric's namesake. I mean, what if they did that to your child, what would you want to see happen? That's the same thing they're saying to the district attorney. Whatever you would do if it was your child, well, do it for us too. We're all equal citizens here in the United States of America. Well, we, let us, okay, Victoria says she would answer that. Two counts of attempted murder. Also, um, any charges to any other officers that should be accountable for the after, which hasn't been released to the public yet, uh, any body cam videos or any other videos. Um, there's more to it that is so disheartening uh, to watch, to experience, and there needs to be something done about that. Also, I'd like to see uh, former officer uh, Brennan behind bars right now. Yeah. It's not safe with him out there. And, and you know, Victoria reminded me of something. You watched the video when her son said, I've been shot. What was his response, Victoria? I want my mom. I mean, he was calling for mom. I just want mom, mom. That was the most painful thing to watch. Yeah. And, and, and Eric, what did the cop say when he said, I've been shot? The cop he, said, you have yes, to come to have. the mic. The, the, the officer, former officer, he's not an officer, said, yes, you have, because I shot you. That is callous. the response, the callous response no, of this police officer. No humanity behind his voice. Dropped him off at the university hospital and said, told his sergeant, oh, he'll be fine. He's going to be okay, not knowing what he did to it. I mean, so to answer your question, what charges would you want for an officer who heard your son say, I've been shot, and he jokingly replies after he shot him multiple times, I know, I shot you. Any other questions? Well, I think she said it. I think she said it. With that being said, though, I, I, I pray for his family. His family. We pray for his family. I do. Eric, um, if, I, if I may. When we had Eric's prayer vigil, about 10 minutes of the vigil was for Officer Brennan and his family because he's a father, too. So 10 minutes of the prayer that we were having to lift Eric up was also to lift him up. But he needs to pay for what he did. Because you don't shoot at something 10 times unless you're trying to kill it. Whatever it is, you don't do it. Thank you. And Uncle, say, say your name again. Raul Anthony Arzate. Thank you. Uh, what specifically would it have to change would you like to see with the San Antonio Police Department? Or is that not going to be discovered until you continue to work with Well, Attorney Grinke and Attorney O'Neill, do you want to speak to that about the change we want to see based on what we saw in that video? Okay, we'll let Attorney O'Neill sure. speak to that. Sure. Uh, good morning. Chris O'Neill uh, with Ben Crump Law. I'm a former police officer in the state of Florida. However, I'm very familiar not only with the Criminal Justice Standards and Training Commission, but also that of Texas as well. Uh, that said, the change that we're looking for is one that includes the community in ensuring that their voices are heard. Part of the problem is law enforcement has always gone from a historical perspective, not looking at the changes in the community. Look behind me. Look at all of these beautiful people. Okay? If you don't have a department that reflects the value of those citizens, then you're going to have a department that is actually counter to the citizenry and the people that they're supposed to be serving. And that's how profiling occurs. And so those simplistic things that happen and then they end up exacerbating themselves and metastasizing into what we have as a situation. I look at the picture of this young man. Everybody look at this picture. 
In no way, shape, or form is this young man a threat. Furthermore, furthermore, when the officer, former officer, actually came up to that vehicle, he had no idea what he was encountering. Clearly a gross violation of policy, but more importantly, a gross violation of humanity. Thank you. And, and I think we will work with the family to see how the Eric Cantu law would look, because that's what they want, some legacy here in this city to reflect this tragedy. It was a tragedy not just for them, but for this community. So change involves the entire community having a dialogue with the police department. Obviously, Paul and our legal team and attorney Chris O'Neill, we will engage the police department with LULAC's help and the other community stakeholders' help to say, what change can we give to Victoria and Eric to be a befitting legacy to Eric in this tragedy? That's what we're working on. Uh, any last questions? Do you want Natalia to say it for you? No, we don't speak Spanish, but we have someone that can for Los us. Los papás no hablan español. Medicamente, bueno, fueron varias balazos en áreas diferentes de su cuerpo, entonces en este momento eh, todavía no consideramos que él está estable, eh, todavía está batallando con los pulmones, en, con la neumonía, desafortunadamente eso le está afectando la presión y el pulso de su corazón, entonces los medicamentos se están teniendo que mover constantemente para tratar de controlar el corazón y los pulmones, entonces ahorita todavía es día a día. Eh, ha preguntado en lo poco que despertó, sus preguntas fueron por sus papás y también por eh, trata de cómo manejar el carro y hace movimientos como de, de una pistola. Entonces, obviamente recuerda y está traumado por lo seguro, pero palabras todavía no, no ha podido y, y seguimos en la batalla dos pasos para adelante, siete para atrás. Con todo el dolor del mundo, ¿verdad? O sea, es el único hijo, eh, el único hombre y están viviendo en el hospital día tras día, eh, los trabajos, o sea, nada importa ahorita, ¿verdad? Es, es nada más estar con él, eh, pedirle a Dios todos los días y dar gracias por cada momento que él está vivo aquí con nosotros y luchando por su vida. De nada. Sí. Mi nombre es Natalia y soy la tía. Mi, es, mi esposo es Rubén y es el hermano de Eric. Farías Carranco. Gracias. I, I'm sorry. Well, Attorney Grink and Stephanie and Chris and Precious and our legal team, we plan on exploring every possible legal avenue to get full justice for Eric and his family. Obviously, we haven't even dealt with the other aspects of this tragedy. Can you imagine the medical bills that are going to pile up after all the cameras go away? After everybody has stopped rallying and talking about it at City Hall. Well, they're going to have to continue to take care of their child, their teenage child, and deal with all the medical complications and the medical bills forever. So what we're going to be seeking is full justice, not only just criminal and civil, but full justice, every aspect of justice, which includes legislative justice and change. Why don't you why don't you do it? No, why don't you do it and then we'll have her do it in Spanish. Spanish. Okay. So we do have a GoFundMe. It's support for Eric Cantu. 100 percent of the proceeds are for Eric Cantu. Not for bills or anything else, but specifically for Eric Cantu. It's support 
for Eric Cantu. It's a GoFundMe. If anybody would like to. to... Para las personas eh, en español, sí. Te... I'm going to make sure they hear us. Mic check, mic check, mic check. One, two, three. John Paul Barajas, can you hear me? Yeah. Want to do it here? Do you want to go over here in the sunlight? 